Hi, my name's Dave Tordoff. I'm a director at Habel and we're the architects for this project. I'm Julia Atkin. I'm an education and learning consultant. Today, Dave and I are going to talk to you about a case study of a 21st century learning hub, a case study of a joint use school and community learning facility. The context for this case study is the state of New South Wales, in fact, regional New South Wales. Traditionally in New South Wales, there has been shared use of school facilities, whereby the community use school facilities out of ours in an agreement with the school. What we're going to talk more about is the case of a joint use facility, which comes out of the work of the school infrastructure branch of the Department of Education in New South Wales, where in 2017, in their school asset strategic plan, they made um, quite clear that they were heading towards the development of community hubs and in particular joint use facilities. Joint use differ from shared use because in joint use, the department and other parties make significant investments both um, land and or capital in new facilities. So it could be upgrading facilities or could be maintaining them or beginning with new facilities. The asset is typically shared between the school and the other parties and over an extended period of time of the lifetime of the asset. These projects are voluntary and intended to be of mutual benefit to all parties. So in the School Asset Strategic Plan, they set out uh, four fundamental principles that are driving the notion of schools as community hubs. One is developing more socially cohesive societies. If you look at what's happened to schools in the industrial era, they separated schools from societies, put a fence around them, defined the time in which kids were there, uh, defined where learning could occur, what hours it could occur, if you like. And so another big uh, push through the schools, community hubs and the joint use projects are to reconnect learning with life. So you can learn anywhere, anytime with anyone. Also, if you think about it, school assets like uh, the community, the school facilities actually sit vacant half of the time that other community facilities like a library might be open. So seriously, about 1400 hours is all that a school uses its facilities in a year. Whereas a community facility like a library is more likely to be used for around 3000 hours. So another one is another push in the idea of a joint use facility is to make much more sensible and collaborative use of the assets that are available. And this is really important in regional areas because there's often a dearth of facilities like arts facilities and uh, presentation spaces, meeting rooms and so on. And of course, through all of this, working in a joint use capacity, you have the possibility of socioeconomic benefit and value add. So the particular context for this project is the Hilltops LGA. The centre or the largest town within the Hilltops LGA is Young. So one of the key questions in a joint use facility is to ask what are the things that the community has that the school does not have and what are the things that the school has that the community does not have and how might they um, provide for each other. It turns out there were enormous synergies in Young where the town wanted a library and they wanted arts facilities the school needed both art, new arts facilities, they needed a multimedia lab, they needed a number of facilities refurbished, and on top of that, they needed two important initiatives, their wellbeing initiative and their uh, Wiradjuri uh, language initiative to be supported in the facilities. So in consultation with the community, one line of vision, supporting whole of life learning in hilltops became the byline for the project. One of the complexities was then synthesising principles from the State Library as well as the Education Facility Standards Guidelines, the education principles for the Department of Education. The town of Young is actually an interesting sort of site where there is almost a, an education precinct already set up across the road from the museum. This gave an opportunity to develop that. The school itself sits on the former Justice Precinct. The key historic aspects of the site include 19th century jail and courthouse, but also a, a series of significant spaces within the landscape, including heritage reconciliation spaces, heritage trees, and also a, an interesting aspect of the orientation of the, the buildings on the site. Those heritage buildings front directly onto Carrington Park, and it was obvious when we arrived at the site that uh, Currawong Street um, had been removed at some point in the prehistory, uh, removing um, community address to those buildings. 
One of the really key things for the community was a big concern that if this facility was all on school grounds, it would become a school facility rather than theirs. So the fact that you were able to get the entry directly off the park and provide a, a strong presence to the park really satisfied that community need. The site has a strong cultural history. The project is built on Wiradjuri country. It was the site of the 1860 Lamming Flats riots. Early works on the site have uncovered rich cultural artefacts and we're looking at those opportunities to continue the storytelling through the project. So with the objective of building community with communities, a series of stakeholder consultations were undertaken uh, with Michael Mossman, an Indigenous architect, GML, and obviously the school's infrastructure team. We came up with this, these two concepts, which were this idea of overlaying historical mapping with cultural concepts. The first theme being the European heritage and colonial heritage of the place, but also this idea of overlaying uh, sacred and special places within the landscape to form a cultural narrative of place. A particular moment of realisation for me was when we visited Condobolo with a number of the elders and how they were drawn not to the building which is, a, which is a circular shaped building but drawn very much to the space between the building. This non-linear approach became something that we adopted through the design response. This idea of a meandering path that could flow through the building and around it and bring together all the different elements of uh, historic elements of the site and is used to define a series of indoor and outdoor interstitial spaces for gathering and community functions. Looking more closely at some of the European uh, and colonial heritage, the massings of the forms uh, of the proposed facility are derived from the 19th century courthouse in terms of bulk and scale and also sight lines from the historic entry point to the jail. From the northwest, standing in front of the jail, the forms of the facility reference the courthouse and can be seen in a more stepping form, whereas from the northeast, the building appears more sinuous and frames these interstitial outdoor spaces of, of, of reconciliation. So as we take the um, macro vision that was developed and then try to apply that to what facilities are available for the community library and the school facility, it really came down to three areas. There were public library spaces that could be booked by and used by the schools and there were school facilities that out of school hours could be used by the community. In addition there was the framing of what might be used as joint spaces and so the notion of a joint collection emerged and it was strongly supported by the project reference group. It was incredibly complex when you look at it as to how we were going to lay out those zones the school use during school hours but available to the community, which were the key facilities that needed to fit in there. It was important to define both what the settings were that were required to enable the different functions, but also what time those functions could be used to get maximum use out of those functions. A community entry was provided directly from Carrington Park and direct school entry was provided from the south on the upper ground floor. Each part of the floor plan is provided with separate vertical circulation so that school and community have direct separable access to each of the floors. Within the shared zone is a shared collection and shared collated staff facilities. Within the community zone are activity focused spaces for reading, gathering, workshopping and exhibition. And then within the school zone is a private collection, learning spaces, well-being spaces and art spaces. I think in many ways by defining the learning and cultural activities first and separately it allowed us to say well each of those functions need to be contained within their own space for really quite practical reasons of acoustics and, and separating those activities that, that need to occur and then by programming those around a communal space and providing shared access to those facilities it really does allow both those facilities to be used by a number of users but also for those, u those uses to be separated off as they needed to be. One of the amazing things about the project is it started to redefine what a contemporary library could be. Contemporary libraries within communities have already shifted away from this idea of just placement of books to more richness of community facilities and bringing communities together within a hub. 
And that was one of the hardest concepts to get over in the community, that a lot of people thought, well, why do we need a library anymore? And it took quite a bit in the consultation for them to start to imagine a contemporary library and what that might mean and the fact that arts facilities could be part of that and that, you know, the opportunity for young people to be teaching the adults around how to use technology and for them to be able to be learning from the adults around art techniques and strategies and exhibit together in the gallery, all of those things were concepts that just weren't in their imagination when we started. As complex as it was to try and make sure that security and access all flowed, the other thing is that this, the hard systems don't stand alone. At the moment, or the next steps for the project will be the school and the community library staff working together to develop the operating procedures and protocols and policies that will dictate how the place is used and the expectations of those using it. It's been an incredibly complex but rewarding project um, in terms of being able to show what can happen in terms of um, adding facilities to a regional area and making them more available to the community at the same time as enriching the school facilities by access to things like the project space, the art gallery. This idea of why not is really the, the core aspiration of this project. It really has become a melting pot for communities to come together under one roof and really learn from each other the whole of life of learning.